Yes, I can hear. Can you hear me? Yes, can we can. Me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay, brilliant. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Orlando, and I uh, work with uh, Training Heights. I'm the chief trainer for Training Heights as an organization. Uh, the idea behind uh, an OSA service desk came when I was implementing an IT service desk for one of our clients who then said, you know what, can't we also do something for them with regards to the service desk, how uh, to make um, health and safety, basically get the participation of everybody in the organization with regards to health and safety. Traditionally, how health and safety is being done in most organizations is that they leave it to a couple of specialists, the people who are meant to be in the health and safety department. They are like the specialists, and they are the ones that primarily do most things with regards to health and safety. So once, when this client did say that, it triggered a thought in my mind that, you know what, it's actually very possible to build a service desk that can you can use to capture various issues and concerns with regards to health and safety and that's where this entire thing came from. So I'll just do a quick rundown of the slide and uh, hopefully we'll have enough time to be able to take uh, some questions and for me to be able to provide some answers to them. Okay? Thank you. Okay, so once again, as I said, uh, in most organizations, um, health and safety issues are, are literally dealt with by experts. And so it's more like uh, the, the doctor-patient relationship where the experts say, this is what we need to do, this is how we need to do it. And it doesn't involve huge, uh, it doesn't involve huge interactions from the staff of the organization. So it, it, we found out that the, the people who work in companies actually have a lot of ideas, a lot of thoughts, a lot of opinion with regards to how health and safety can be done. They are also the best people to actually report health and safety issues and requests within an organization. So this entire um, webinar is almost like merging two separate things uh, into one. One of them is health and safety. The other one is the concept of a service desk, how it's deployed within ISO 20,000 as it is. So but the focus here is how do we use that same service desk that we use in an organization, how do we use it? for health and safety as it is. If any organization and the companies that I've seen that have done this well, they've been able to get a lot of mileage and leverage out of it because literally it puts uh, capabilities in the hands of the staff of the organization. So it makes it easy for them to report, it makes it easy for them to, to make requests, it makes it easy for them to contribute ideas and opinion with regards to how health and safety does work. So I'll just go, so basically that's the background uh, for in, in this regard, and I'll just go ahead with this. Um, so in this webinar, I'm going to try to cover five things. Uh, well, hopefully, uh, maybe more, or maybe slightly, uh, maybe five on the dot. Uh, one of them will be to try and identify and itemize the, the types of events and incidents that can come from health and safety from the staff of the organization. The other is to think about how will we get, can we get a process flow chart to work because it's essential that, you know, in trying to set up a service desk, you must be able to come up with some kind of flow chart uh, that defines how the system will be built. Then uh, I found out the major issue is that uh, health and safety people don't really understand how technology works. I mean, in at the level of detail that they should. So I'm going to try to understand how service desks work so that we can con effectively align how, how the service desk that is in the organization can now be turned around to become a health and safety service desk in addition. And um, yeah, I'll talk about the role of technology and some possible reports that we can get uh, that we should be worried about that we should be thinking about from uh, a service desk. So the first bit here is to try to itemize uh, the types of um, um, uh, issues that come up and that need to be reported from a service desk. So what are the challenges that people have seen? And I have been doing this work for, for, for at least a decade and um, speaking with different clients, implementing various things for different clients from intranets to portals to service desks. 
and even to working on health and safety engagement, what are the things that we have seen? One of them is that the traditional way by which health and safety is being dealt with is not the most effective as of today because um, it's in a lot of places, there's only a few places where you, they buy like specialist software. In most places where they don't buy specialist software for health and safety, it's literally been managed as a bunch of documents on a shared drive of some sort. And that is not, that's not the most effective way to do it. There are the, the more effective ways by which this can be done. The use of intranet, the use of document management systems, the use of a service desk, and that is what I will be covering and those are one of the things we'll be looking at. Um, so IT does play a major part in how a 21st century service desk should, should operate. A service desk in 2015 should be much more effective than the ones that we had five, ten years ago. And the difference is going to be from, uh, from IT. We can use technology to automate how issues are being raised, how they are validated, how they are reported, how they are addressed, and um, basically keep a huge database of historical issues that have ever come up from, uh, from health and safety perspective. So one of the other issues, of course, is also the fact that IT departments, who you're hoping that will be able to help out, usually hardly offer any help at all. They're either too busy or neither do they really understand what health and safety does, enough for them to say, you know what, well, we can build or we can provide you with simple uh, solutions from a service desk and from an IT perspective that you can use to capture, classify, escalate, and resolve things within health and safety. And finally, as I said, the same service desk that is using your organization as at today that same service desk can be configured, reconfigured, reworked in such a way that it now becomes a, 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 a service desk for health and safety issues. All right. So what are the types of issues? I mean, uh, depending on how you practice health and safety in your organizations, the approach can be varied. I mean, different people have different, uh, should I say, understanding of health and safety. Different people categorize them in different ways. Uh, but some of the types of issues that come up are obviously work-related work uh, accidents, and that's, that, that, that's key. The types of accidents that happen and the ability of staff to be able to report it quickly via a simple portal, via a service desk application, via a couple of electronic forms and um, capabilities that are provided within the organization. Some of those uh, issues and accidents can cause death. Some of them can cause injuries. Um, it can be the reports with regards to diseases and um, notifications that are aligned. I've worked in uh, different places where there's literally been like some kind of uh, epidemic disease break breakout, and um, people had to encourage people, please, if you have this, if you notice this, please report it to us. But the tools for the reporting were not necessarily made available. So it's not just for, for us to say, you know, people should report things, but it's also for us to provide the tools and the platforms that they can use for the reporting. So you can have dangerous occurrences, you can have various types of incidents uh, that cause direct harm, even to the general public. So I've also seen scenarios whereby uh, there's been um, some kind of uh, electricity issue, uh, power line breakout that can actually not just affect the staff of the organization, but the members of the public. And that in itself needs to be quickly reported by the people who've got the easiest access to the platform to the health and safety expert. But one key part of this also is around sharing thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. Uh, I believe clearly that the staff that work in an organization really do have ideas, really do have thoughts, and really do have suggestions in terms of how health and safety can be improved. So it really should not be the, the, the expert and the non-expert relationship. We need to literally provide expert systems or systems that the average person, the lay person, can use to also contribute their own thoughts, their own ideas and suggestions with regards to how health and safety can be improved within the organization. And finally, we should be looking at uh, alerts and notifications that can, uh, with regards to health and safety concerns but raised primarily by staff and sometimes when the health and safety experts also do raise these things. 
how we can ensure that people are getting notifications in their emails and their mobile phones with regards to things that they should do uh, in, in, certain, in certain events. Okay? Um, so quickly, I, I tried to say, if you sit now in your office as a health and safety professional, and this will this won't be very difficult for somebody who is already in technology or who is already in IT as it is. This won't be very difficult for them. But for somebody who is in who is in health and safety and who is not very familiar with how systems are built and designed, what are some of the things that we need to provide? So typically today we provide paper-based forms. So I see a lot of paper-based forms, uh, a lot of Microsoft Word documents that you can download from the internet. Which, uh, that shows you uh, how do you fill the form and then send it as an attachment or you know upload it. But there are more effective ways of doing that. So some of the key fields that we should be thinking about obviously is the name of the person who is raising this request. So the staff, their ID, the department that they belong to and maybe their reporting lines in the organization. Now most organizations have something called Active Directory. So there's all usually some kind of directory management system that usually provides that. So the person just has to type in their ID and all the other fields can be uh, completed automatically. Um, the next one is the name and the nature of the issue. So it would be nice to have some kind of categorization for issues that come up. And I know a lot of organizations already have this from a, um, from a, from a health and safety perspective once again these things are not necessarily automated and that is what it is that we're talking about on this webinar. So we can put the categorizations whether it's domestic, whether it's electrical, whether it's uh, environmental, whether it's mechanical, whether it's um, some kind of disease, whatever categorization that works for us we can put it in there and then it's the description. So the staff is meant to be able to say you know fill this form, this electronic form and put an appropriate description for the issue that they're either experiencing or that they've noticed in their environment. The next one is um, the, so who is involved with this. So the person who is doing the reporting might not also be the person who is involved. So there might be somebody who is reporting something that is happening uh, in their department, in their physical space, in their own geography but it might not necessarily be about them. So if it does involve another staff, they should be able to say, you know what, this particular staff with this name, uh, there's some kind of emergency, it's a health hazard, it's, a, uh, it's an environmental issue, it's a cause for harm and a cause for concern. So they should not only be able to tell about their, themselves who are doing the reporting, but also about an, a person or a group of people that might also be involved. Then they should be able to talk about the level of impact, and I've called it seriousness here. So some organizations say, you know, how serious is this? And you can use a, a simple way of doing it. So you can say high, medium, low. And they should be also be able to say how urgent is this, right? Is this very urgent? Is this something that is not urgent, but you want us to look into in the future? Should also be able to specify and say that clearly. Then um, when is this happening? What is the date and the time that this particular issue is happening? Right? So we can use a date picker, a time picker from the from the, the IT people who might be designing this type of form might be able to do put in a date and time picker. Also the possible suggestions for resolution. The people who are reporting some of these things have ideas and suggestions that are really useful. So it will be nice for us to be able to say, you know what, can you document what do you think is an explanation, what do you think is an, is, is an approach by which we might be able to solve this particular problem. Now it doesn't mean the health and safety experts will take what it is that has been said, but it will just be useful to get some kind of opinion from the person who is doing this. Finally, you know, um, in this day and age everybody uses very uh, smartphones where they can capture videos and they can take pictures to give, should I say, more, more precise and more vivid explanations to what it is that they perceive as a concern. So if you look at this simple form that I've, uh, that I've described on this page, you will agree with me that it will be useful to actually you know, build electronic forms that can be attached to our intranet, it can be attached to our service desk, 
and it can even be standalone web applications that we have within the organization. But the key thing is, is that it should be available to all the staff of the organization. And the recipients of the information that is coming through these electronic forms will be the experts. They will be the people who truly understand the things that should be done for certain categories and in certain scenarios. But you would agree with me that if we put something like this in place, it really does help that people feel involved, that the staff of the organization feel extremely involved in being uh, as part of the health and safety initiative in an organization. In a lot of places where I've seen this work, people feel that health and safety belongs to a set of people, especially where the maturity is not maturity level three or four where the organization is just really growing with regards to health and safety, people don't think that health and safety is really their concern. But encouraging behaviors and allowing people to fill this kind of form as often as possible allows them to be a part of the initiative and whatever strategy we're using within the organization. All right, so I'm going to move away a bit from where I was and try to describe to you what is a service desk? Because the primary way that I was looking at how this, which I've done this for a lot of clients, and which you might also be considering, is the use of a, of a service desk. So most of our organizations have some kind of service desk. Most organizations. It's just that most of the service desks are used for reporting IT issues. So people report IT issues where they say, oh, I need a new printer. My laptop has gone bad. I've forgotten my password. And it's usually a very easy platform that you can use and that helps people to work. So in this same vein, a service desk can be used to capture health and safety issues. So I've given the simple definition of a service desk as a functional unit. It can be completely technology driven. It might also be made up of people, right? And um, usually it will be integrated. It's usually software and it will be integrated with some kind of telephony system. They will have some kind of URL that people can, so it can be in an organization, it can be organization slash service desk, which is just a URL on their intranet where people can access the application, okay? And it, will, it, it might also have, it might be integrated with the document management system, it might be integrated with the intranet and with various other platforms within the organization. They, the, one of the key principles with regards to service desk is that it should be a single point of contact for business users. So business users, in this instance, health and safety issues should be able to say, you know what, all the things that originate from the users, from the business users, from the staff of the organization can be reported via this platform. Uh, another value of service deck should, uh, I mean, the value of service deck should not be un uh, underestimated at all. Uh, a lot of organizations will not exist if there is no IT service deck. So the same way IT service decks are prioritized, and given the level of uh, importance within the organization, is the same way if we ever succeed with building or initiating a health and safety service desk, they can have the same level of importance, the same level of, of prioritization within an organization. But a service desk is a really useful tool. The concept is brilliant, and it really does make sense if we can adopt that entire service desk concept Within, within health and safety in our, in our organizations, okay? All right. All right, so what are some of the classifications and the terms that are used and that can be useful? One of them is an event, and, all right? And an event is, is, is the change of state. If we have a, 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 a wall socket that has changed state, it's no longer functional, that is an event. And it's an event that ideally should be reported, some kind of alert, right, should be raised concerning that event, right? If something is about to go bad, the, 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 the tap in the, in the kitchen, um, the, the, the sink, something is about to go wrong, it's an event. And with an event comes an alert. And these alerts is some kind of warning saying that, you know, something hasn't necessarily gone wrong. However, we should report that something is about to go wrong or might go wrong soon with regards to this particular element within the organization. 
it can be broken chairs, it can be tables, it can be anything at all that is a cause for concern. And so an alert should be raised, and that alert can be raised there in the service desk. Also, an incident, which is a higher level of uh, severity compared to that in event, literally says that, you know what, something has gone wrong. There is an, interrup an interruption, something has gone wrong, a chair is broken, a faucet is broken, something has gone wrong that can be detrimental to the health and to the safety of people in the organization. So we can quickly come up with a workaround or allow health and safety experts within the organization to come up with a quick workaround to address the incident, okay? So the final one, or the second to the last, is a request. Some people have various types of requests, and they raise those requests today, either sending emails or filling forms, uh, paper-based, Word documents, to make requests to health and safety department, or sometimes to the admin department in the organization. That also can be captured. And finally, problem, which is the highest level of severity, is to say, you know what, something has gone wrong, it's going to be a big issue, it is priority level one, urgency level one, high priority, high, um, high severity, and we're going to need some expertise to deal and, uh, with this, this particular incident. So these are some of the categories, especially when we say event, incident, request, and problems. Now, these are known terms for the people who build service desk applications because this is how the service desk methodology and ISO 20000 does say that it should be done. All right. So the health and safety experts. So the, the idea behind this is not just for, it's not just for the, the users and the staff of the organization. The health and safety experts themselves also have huge use for this platform. For one, when the... When the issues and the events are raised and the incidents are raised, it goes to the expert. It doesn't go to the IIT department. It goes to the health and safety department. They are the ones who will now have the responsibility to take corrective action, to make changes in the, in, uh, to certain things within the organization, to take what we can refer to as uh, contingent actions. It is within their own teams. They know the escalation parts. Who should they escalate this to? Maybe to an external authority. They know the approvals that they need. They know who the issue resolution teams are and what workflows need to be in place. So the, 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 the health and safety system, service desk, is of two sides. One side of it is for the users who actually log things in. The other side of it is for the health and safety experts who actually read, review, and act on everything that has been logged, on, uh, logged in by the users. So it's, a, it's twofold. So it's, you know, the health and safety experts use it. The users of the organization also are heavy, big users of this platform. Now, with these types of, um, of, of um, uh, the, these, these areas that I've identified in here, it allows the, the, the builders of the system, the people who are going to build the system, it allows them to, this acts like a simple checklist to say, do we have corrective actions? Do we have change management? If we're going to change things in the organization, what approvals do we need? What workflows need to be in place? So this is a bit more technical than just looking at it from the user's perspective, but also thinking about it that the health and safety experts also have major, major use of the of the application in itself. All right. Um, yes, so the health and safety service desk, again, it's a self-service type platform. It's a help, uh, it, it provides help because you can actually uh, put in loads of, you can have some kind of knowledge base or knowledge management system where various historical issues have been logged in and people can do self-service, they can check things out for themselves. Um, Staff of the organization can go to get educated about various types of um, health and safety issues and how they should be resolved and the types of um, events that trigger those issues. Uh, users can search for information. They can find quick resolution to things 
that happen within their within their own departments or within their own geographical space. And you can hold all sorts of documents and guidance documents and guides for the users to address simple issues within the organization. Every service desk comes with some kind of knowledge management system. So it is important and it's essential that in addition to the user side, in addition to the expert side, which we looked at in the slide before now, that a knowledge management system is also included as part of it. And you don't have to get to maturity level one on day one. It doesn't happen that way. These things are gradual. Organizations get into these over time when they put things uh, in place. But it's a good place to start. Build some forms. Make sure that you, you've got document libraries where you can archive useful documents, um, easy to use and understand uh, posters and handbills and place cards can all be cataloged and captured within the system. All right. Um, so, uh, yeah, sorry, one second. Sorry. Okay. So, yeah, this is the same thing. Quick resolution of the issues, ability of service deck to hold documents. So, same side, literally. So, now I'm going to talk about, you know, um, something that the health and safety people will, I mean, hopefully find very familiar and uh, useful, which they have to work with the system developers to put in place. As we mentioned earlier, we said we'll have events, which are the list in terms of severity, that just trigger points that say that something can go wrong. Then we have requests, which are also not high severity. Now we have incidents which literally say that something has gone wrong and it needs to be dealt with. And when we can say it's a problem. And when it's a problem, then you know it means that you know lives um, might be endangered if that particular issue is not addressed. So it's in it's an increasing level of complexity or severity. Events to requests to incidents and to problems. Health and safety people usually have to change something. <laughs> Typically, they will have to change something before we can agree or say that a particular issue is closed. The issue of something being closed is very important. Two sets of people are important with regards to closure. The users that are involved and the health and safety professionals themselves. So it's not enough for the, for the I've seen where there's a huge disparity of opinion between if users and business users believe that something has been adequately addressed and for the experts will believe or will say that that thing has been addressed appropriately. So this is a useful sequence of activities and some kind of escalation path that can be taken into consideration when building and when implementing the Health and Safety Service Act. From events to requests to incidents to problems and a catalog of historical changes and changes that need to be made now with the right approvals and obviously resolution or with the right sign-offs. So this is, this is an essential part and a very, uh, a very key element of putting in place a service desk. All right, I'll just go through this and I'll try to address the questions at the, at the end so that you know, I can just maintain uh, the flow appropriately. So somebody's thinking to themselves, how can this be done? Is, are we going to have to build like a huge application, invest a lot of money, and you know, or start to shop around for custom built platforms? Not at all. I don't think so. I think you know, um, most organizations they can build this as a simple. It can evolve, and they can build it as a simple application, one on their intranet, definitely. So I have done this for organizations. I know that this is very possible for you to build this on an intranet. All right, so a couple of uh, capabilities and the people who put the internet in your organization should be able to put this together. Um, some people have built it on an existing uh, service desk application. I don't have to mention various vendors, but yeah, there's a lot of uh, service desk applications. Some of them are even open source and they're great and they're used by some organizations and you can customize them. Some of them are simple PHP applications that can be customized uh, for the use of health and safety professionals. Um, also, some of them are web applications where you can build a simple standalone application and people know the URL within the organization and they can report this. And then, of course, you can integrate with an existing telephony system whereby 
the things you record via the via phone calls are also logged in or on, on an application. And uh, yes, you can actually build on any application. So it's not about the, the idea behind this is not to go and kick off a huge procurement exercise to be able to buy um, to be able to buy a, a service desk or a, a custom application. It is really around using what it is that you have in your organization to achieve the things you need to achieve. And one of those things really is to just, you know, either take your intranet, take your existing service desk, or build a simple web application. And the first version of this type of tool can be built within a week or two weeks, whereby at least you have something that is usable, it's integrated with the messaging platform, and it works. And you can then have a maturity path for the for the platform and it can go it can go on from there. It can become more mature over time. Okay, types of reports that we can get from a system like this, because I will round up in a, in a couple of minutes. Um, number of users who have logged many issues within the defined period. Uh, just like IT goes, if you can log, if you, if you can hold information, then of course most systems can report on it. So if you have a good developer, good IT department, once the data is in, they can actually report on it. So types and categories of incidents that have been logged or called within a defined period, units of department that have had issues, the locations and the geographies that these issues have been logged, components that have undergone change or that have been problematic within a, a, certain, a certain period of time. So if th this information is essential and it is useful information and it is information that is, it belongs to the organization. It doesn't just belong to specific health and safety experts in the business, it belongs to the organization. And the organization should be concerned about having a historical, um, you know, historical records and historical documents with regards to, to health and safety. So this is not a nice to have. It's not something that people will say, well, I think it's nice or I think it's great. This is actually something that any forward-looking organization, anybody who is thinking about moving the maturity of their service decks from one level to another should be significantly interested in, uh, uh, in, in putting things like this uh, in place. I, I dare say at this junction it might be useful if you just send me your, your questions. You can send your questions to me uh, either via the chat or yeah, you can post it in and I can look at it and I'll in a couple of minutes when I am done I will be able to just um, quickly address some of the questions and uh, this uh, presentation is going to be shared so um, and I think uh, you so you can easily get my email address if you have any other thing you want me to advise uh, with regards to I will be quite happy to do that so you can send me a chat or send me whichever way you, you think the questions can come in I'll be quite happy to address them in a couple of minutes okay yeah the next uh, things so well, what are the things that I've seen that have been issues where people have tried to do this. One of them is, uh, and I said this at the very beginning, health and safety experts usually don't really have adequate understanding of how technology works. Uh, so people always think technology is always complex. Technology is always hard to achieve. But not really. You can put in a simple document management system that you can use with document libraries. You can use to hold and archive uh, all health and safety documents and uh, historical policies and the updates to all those policies. Uh, the other challenge that I've seen is IT experts usually don't don't have time for some of this. They have a lot of things that they're dealing with. So on their priority list, health and safety issues just don't make it up in terms of what it is that they consider to be uh, priority. So that, that 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 that's how I've seen that this has worked. Sometimes the IT people are not too willing to support the health and safety uh, experts don't really understand the kind of involvement that they need IT earned, so they're also a bit um, reluctant to also bring some of these issues. IT people think uh, financial software and all other operational software are more important than uh, health and safety, but I, I think differently about it. I think health and safety is key. I think it is essential. I think the organization needs health and safety to, to be able to, to, to be sustainable as a business. Um, health and safety comes on their enterprise risk management in itself because 
I mean, a threat to life is a threat to the business, and probably even more important than the threat to the business. So this is not this is not a nice to have. This is not something that should be taken uh, casually. It is of, of, of primary interest to organizations, and technology should be used to enhance this. And for this to work, two expert communities need to work together. The IT people who understand technology, who are able to help, who are able to build some of the systems, and the health and safety experts who know the business case and the value and the justification of all this, need to work together closely, I mean, and I mean very closely, to be able to build, so, and, I, and I'm very specific, if you check in my slide, I said, you know, uh, to, to build smart, custom, and inexpensive health and safety service deck solutions. To, speak, to, to fit the specific needs of organizations. Because, I mean, the, the idea behind this is not to spend uh, uh, millions of dollars or spend a lot of money in ensuring that this gets done. The idea behind this is to use very inexpensive tools to build this and to make sure it's working within an organization. Okay? And, um, yeah, I, all right. So, uh, in conclusion, as I said, it's a simple tool. It can be done. I have done it for organizations. It's not rocket science at all. You can get people to help out. Uh, you can get IT people. You can get technology people. And they can work around ensuring that this happens. It's not going to happen in one day. It will be gradually done. Um, you need a lot of education so that the users who are meant to be using these platforms will end up using them. All right? And then, of course, this also helps us to be able to, should I say, codify or turn the expert knowledge that the health and safety experts have to turn it into some kind of intelligence for the business, to turn it into some kind of um, expert system for the business so that um, health and safety can just be much more uh, effective in organizations. Health and safety is the business of all. I said it here. It's the business of everybody in the organization. It's not really an expert, non-expert relationship. Everybody is involved, and uh, it is the responsibility of the health and safety professionals themselves to ensure that they put simple, useful tools like this in place uh, for the business. And um, I think that concludes it from my from my side. Uh, as I said, it's a simple presentation. It's a simple idea. Uh, you've got to think through it, and um, yes, it's very workable as it is. Okay, thank you, and I'll be quite happy to attend to whatever questions you might uh, have. Thank you, thank you very much, Orlando. We unfortunately we don't have time for questions, so I would like to invite everyone to send you the questions either to our email or to your email, so that you can respond them personally. Okay, I think yeah, I think we're, we're about forty minutes now, isn't it? Yeah, they yeah, it, it's already been forty. It's already been forty minutes, so we can read. Uh, if they can, if they can, please leave the questions with, with their email. Then I will forward them to you, and you can Brilliant. reply to them personally. Brilliant. Thank you very Absolutely. much. Thank you very Thank much you for much. presenting this webinar. And thank you very much to everyone for attending. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. All right.